G'day fellas, welcome to the House Up Military Overview. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at every single military unit that you can make with the House Up. So, I'm going to start by just showing you the native tribes that you're going to be able to ally with on your way up to age 2. So, that starts with the Berbers and the Akan. So, in this instance, we will come back to these two tribes. In the meantime, we're just going to age up with the Moroccans. It's not going to give us any new units. I'm going to show you what you're going to be able to make as soon as you age up to the second age. So you're going to be dropping down your war camp, which is essentially your barracks. It's the same thing that uh, most civilizations have got. It costs 200 wood. So once you've got this, this down, you're going to have an option to build three units in the second age. So the first unit that you're going to be able to build is the Falani Archer. So the Falani Archer is a unit that's got a number of different upgrades and these upgrades are able to boost it up in stats so it's a, a typical archer unit now you might look at it on the surface and you might think it's particularly weak it's only got nine ranged attack but one of the things to note is that it does have a ranged uh, rate of fire of 1.5 which means that it's actually quite high it's got a very good animation as well it fires very similar to a Yumi Archer, so if you've got, uh, you know, quite a big mass of these, it can actually be a very good thing to have them uh, with their low damage because it enables you to kill more units because you're able to put out more more DPS uh, and, and not avoid overkilling. So there you can see uh, the rate of fire is quite high. There's one shot, there's two shots going off, it's quite, and there's the third shot. Very, very quick rate of fire on these units. So a, a really fun unit to micro. Uh, these do cost both food and wood, one population. Let's move on to the second unit. So you may be familiar with it. It's the Javelin Rider. So in addition to the house are having it, the Ethiopia of also, or, uh, Ethiopia have also got this unit. So this unit is a Dragoon unit, high HP, relatively low attack, but it's got multipliers against both artillery and cavalry, especially in melee. It's got a, a, a high rate of fire as well to remember because it is that archer style. Uh, it does have, its animation isn't as good as the Fulani Archer, it's going to need a little bit of time to wind up before it actually gets its shots off, so you can see here that the way that it gets it, the shots off, it needs a little bit of time just to, to wind those up and, and then throw the javelin into the ground, or in, into the, uh, into the, the crocodile rather. So that's your second unit. Now the third unit is the Raider. Uh, so the Raider is 100 food, 40 coin. Let's take a look at these bad boys. So the Raider right here. Uh, so 26 Siege, a lot of Siege, 180 hit points. They kind of remind me a little bit of a Step Rider from the Chinese. So these guys are only one population. They have a very high uh, Siege attack, but a relatively low HP. But they do have that 30% uh, range resist. And they're a very fast unit as well. So a, a great unit against civilizations like the Japanese. A great civil, uh, unit against civilizations like uh, the Swedes. Because you're going to be able to run around the map do a lot of siege, you've got lots of speed, uh, you can run away, and you know, it, it's it's a very strong uh, unit, uh, and you can see very effective at killing villages as well, 22 attack, so not too bad at all, definitely not too shabby. Now, in addition to these three units, there's actually a fourth unit that you can make in the second age out of the war camp, but you're going to have to send a card to do it, so it's this one right here, so the card is called Gananchi, uh, so it ships a number of Akan Ancobius, Ancobius, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, enables them to be trained from war camps where they cost population, food, and coin. So we're going to send through that shipment and we'll take a look at exactly what they are. So there it is now. So these are a native unit, uh, but you can now train them. So they're a musketeer style unit. So if you're a big fan of musketeers you, and you want to go that unit or that, that route, if you, if you don't like, you know, dragoons, skirmish, uh, or, or you just want to add a little bit more flexibility, then you can do this as well. Keep in mind, though, it does cost influence. So it does cost, uh, I think it was 250 influence. Uh, so that is something to consider. Uh, it's not going to be something that you can send for free. Now, in addition to that, there are other units that you can make. So we're going to drop down the palace as well. Now, keep in mind, the palace is a little bit more expensive than the war hunt, but there are units that you can make out of the palace. So now you can see, so we've trained some Akan and Kobias. Now, keep in mind, these guys have got a build limit on them, but when you send in this uh, this uh, upgrade or this technology, it actually removes that build limit. So that now you can build an infinite amount uh, so the next unit that we're going to be talking about, I'm not sure if I need to send a card for it. Here we go. Uh, so the the unit that we're going to be talking about is the Magadite. Now, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this unit correctly. Uh, so the unit costs influence to make. So you can see here, I've, I've got a lot of influence stacked up. 200 influence. So they're quite expensive units. So 
they're Ooh, also a musketeer unit, but they're, they're a little bit strange. They've got a bonus against mercenaries, which isn't the most useful bonus. Also got a very high uh, health pool as well. 20% range resist, which is not too bad at all. So a, a great, they're, they're sort of like a, a musketeer unit as well. Uh, now keep in mind, they don't have any real multipliers, but you can change that. So we can send in here. So we've got Dane guns that can be sent in. So that's actually going to change it so that they have a cost of uh, 100 coin at, instead of, so it's got 100 coin, 100 influence. So basically it splits the cost so your influence, uh, it, which is going to be the harder resource to gather, isn't so big. But obviously, coin is still a relatively difficult uh, resource to gather as well. Uh, we've also got access to the Zuave, which is available in H2, but a very expensive unit. I can't anticipate that you'll be making this. Uh, it is a mercenary unit. I'm not sure why it's available in H3 uh, or in H2. It might be because we've gone up with the Moroccans, but uh, I, I wouldn't advise using it. Also got access to the levied gunner, so that's like a Minuteman, uh, that's a musketeer, and then you've also got the levied spearman, as well as the levied bowman, uh, so they, they lose health points or hit points over time, so there, there we go, now you see the Magadise coming in now. So there is a card in Age 3 for the Magadise that will give them additional uh, attack against cavalry, so that's something to consider using if you are going to be making Magadise. Uh, and in addition to that, we've also got the final military building uh, that we can place down. It's this guy right here. So it is a watchtower. So we're going to get four villagers on that. Uh, so this is where you're going to be able to make your... Uh, they're, they're like... Uh, uh, what are they called? They're outlaw units. So these outlaw units here, they're expensive units. So we're going to start by looking at the the Desert Raider here. So the Desert Raider, it's the same cost as an Uland. A, li a little bit more uh, population expensive. Uh, but keep in mind that it is a really cool unit. So we did cover this when we looked at the Ethiopian, so I'm not going to go super in-depth to it, but it does do siege damage. So you might be used to a, a melee cavalry unit doing melee damage. It's not the case. It actually does siege damage. So it bypasses melee uh, resistances. So if you've got an, a, a unit that's got melee resist like this one here, the Akan and Kobia, like most musketeers do, it's going to be doing that full damage to it. It's got 30% resist as well, relatively fast as well, 6.75 movement speed. Let's take a look at the other units that we've got access to in here. Make sure that we build another house just so we can get five of them out. We can just delete some some units that we're, we're not using anymore. Uh, where are they? Here we go. So we'll get these guys out. So these guys are the Desert Warriors. 30 food, 70 coin. Uh, and so I, I'm a big fan of these. These are the ones that I kind of like refer to them as shapeshifters because you change uh, based on what you're up against. So just their base stats already are quite good. So they've got 12 range, 15 attack, but they've got a 1.5 rate of fire. Uh, they've got a very good animation because they're javelin throwers. So basically firing off a, a javelin almost instantly. Uh, I'm just going to delete these guys. So if, if you take a look here, they fire up those javelins very quickly. Uh, so really, really easy to micro these units here. Uh, and, uh, and and just a, a really great animation because it's got that 1.5 second cooldown as well. So a, a really, really nice... Uh, unit now it's got a 20% range resist which is a wonderful range resist but you can switch that up let's say you don't want that you want siege resist there you go you switch it to stagger mode now you've got siege resist you don't like that that's okay you want to go in melee bam now you've got melee mode and now keep in mind when you do that it's going to change the formation it's going to change the way that they move but here we go moving into the defensive stance that's going to move them into a different stance but it's also going to make them slower you see the way that they're moving now but now they've got a 20 percent resist against absolutely everything so a, a really really cool uh uh what mechanic i guess is the best way to say it they they obviously have a much slower speed as well 2.13 compared to the the 4.25 that they normally do, um, and then we're, we're going the stand ground. They've also got this, the same uh, bonuses, but they follow a little bit more of a natural uh, formation uh, compared to what what they were following before that that tighter formation. So let's take a look at the last unit that you have available to you. So it's the Desert Archer. So the Desert Archer, and also a mercenary unit, relatively good. Um, a, a a relatively good. Oh, no, don't. Uh, I think he's gonna he's gonna die. So a, a relatively good animation up close but from a distance it's much slower so the way that it works is based on the distance so if you're far away from your enemies like here you can see that they fire like a longbow so once again firing like a longbow but we move up closer up to within 12 range they fire like a yumi archer much faster so it's uh it's important to consider that when you're using uh when you're using these guys uh the, the way that they're going to be doing that 
normally you want to be using the long range where possible, but uh, if it does get up close and, and, and personal, they're always going to be able to rely on that. So what we're going to do now, we're going to restart the game. We're going to take a look at the two native tribes that you're also going to have access to in the second age. So the first one that we're going to take a look at are the Berbers. So the Berbers are a native tribe that I'm a big fan of. And the reason why is because they are like an all-in-one anti-cavalry civilization or, or like a minor civilization. So you're going to get the native embassy builder as your uh, age up bonus. And with this, you can automatically train those native units. Now, in addition to that, you're also going to be able to train Berber Nomads. So if you're not familiar with those, they're villager units, but they are uh, much faster at gathering natural resources like hunts, uh, like trees. Uh, they gather the same rate on coin mines, but when it comes to agricultural work, such as, you know, farms, mills, those sorts of things, much slower. Uh, now, you do have a limit of five of these, so you can also train these out of your uh, native embassy. So there is potential here if you want to do like a really big focus on uh, economy, then you can definitely look at doing that. Now, in addition to that, um, if you want to know more about uh, the Berbers as a minor civilization, I've just recently, the, the video yesterday was focusing on all the brand new uh, minor civilizations, so go check that out. In addition to that, so you've got the the, the camel riders. This is, this is the main point. So as soon as you age up, you're going to be getting, I think it's 400 influence that you get up in crates, and your villagers are going to be able to gather that up. You're going to be able to make Berber camel riders. You're also going to be able to call a salt camel, uh, which allows you to construct a, a, a salt mine. So I'll, I'll show you guys what that all looks like. Uh, we'll, we'll turn Speed Always Wins on just so we can see exactly what happens. So the Berber camels, oh, the, first of all, the salt mine, let's get that out of the way. Salty, salty Jongo, I know. Uh, so the salt mine, 10,000 coin, but it gathers slowly. So if you consider it, uh, if, you, if you were to look at, uh, at the salt mine, uh, just take a look right there. Uh, so it, it's gathering slightly slower, uh, so that's it. You've also get access to these five Berber villages, which gather faster. But the big highlight is the Berber Camel Rider. And so with this Camel Rider, you can see it's got a two times multiplier against cavalry. That's all cavalry. So anything that's riding on a horse, it's going to count up with a two times multiplier. A lot of health, very fast as well, 7.25, which is, a you know, that's as fast as a sower uh, for the Indians. So a wonderful unit. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of this. 20% resist, 300 HP, a lot. The only thing to note with this unit, though, is it is technically a light range cavalry. That means it will get countered by skirmisher units, okay? So you don't want to be using this as a hussar or as a, you know, as a raider, as that, you know, that, that Naginata sort of rider. That's not what you want to be using it for. It's going to be about anti-cavalry and making sure it's hitting enemy cavalry units up on top of them to be most effective. Now, let's get into the second uh, minor native civilization. So it's going to be the Akan that we're looking at. Now, we've already talked about the Akan because you do gain access to the Akan through a card. Uh, so in this situation, it's a little bit different. So here you can see uh, you unlock the Akan. Uh, we'll turn speed always wins on. So we get that, that upgrade. And now we once again, we get that native embassy. We get the 400 influence on the ground. So you can see we've got the four tokens of influence there to pick up. So that is the, the first thing that we're going to have available to us. And then once that's built, we'll turn speed always wins on. We'll get some of the units out. So these have got a build limit of 12. You're only going to be paying influence for these guys. So they've got their 100 influence each. So if instead you elect to ally with them, it would probably make sense uh, to avoid uh, shipping that card that allows you to train them. Uh, but once again, this is uh, the, the exact same unit, just a little bit different. One of the things to note that when you do ally with these tribes, that you actually gain the technologies that they've got, just like if you had allied with the native trading post. So as an example here, I'm, gonna, I'm going to go and, uh, and get my university up. You can see I've now got the Akan gold economy. I've got Akan palm oil exports. I've got uh, another Akan, or this isn't another Akan, but you can see I've got the technologies for the Akan that are in here. Uh, so it, you don't lose those bonuses as well. Now, obviously, I can also go and ally with the Akan over here as well. Increase this, uh, the build limit, get that up. But let's talk more about the other units that you've, you're going to have access to as the Hausa. So in addition to this, you're also going to have shipments that you can send from the home city. Uh, so we've already talked about the Berber allies. So they're the exact same uh, units that you get to have uh, in the... Um, uh, uh, with the age up, so you get six of them that you can send from the home city. Uh, so we'll turn speed. Uh, let's turn Nova and Orion on. Just make sure that we've got a few more shipments. 
uh, let's get those units in. So the first one is going to be the Sudanese allies. So I've also done a video on this recently. So once again, the minor allies, we've talked about this. These are great units. These are really, really good value. It's basically like 12 skirmisher units. They're incredibly great. They have really cheap units as well. They only cost 80. I feel like they probably need to be um, nerfed a little bit just because they're so cheap. Uh, but the, the reason why these units are particularly strong is first and foremost, take a look at this base attack rate. They have an attack rate of one. That means for every single second that passes, they attack once. Compare that to this unit, which is a 1.5, which is pretty standard for most units. So they attack really fast in melee. They also attack faster the closer you get to enemy units. So I'll show you what it looks like when they actually attack in melee. Let's pull these crocodiles out so we can actually have a look. We'll just get a couple of these guys in. But you can you can just see how fast they are attacking. They've got the same animation as the Rodolero, but they are just going, they, they go ham, don't they? Like, have a, have a look how quick he is. One, two, three. Four. It's it's like it's very very quick. Oh, we don't want to, don't want to delete. Um, now the big thing about these guys is they attack in melee, so they can bypass range resistance. So you you probably want to be including these guys in your deck because when it comes to say a skirmisher war, you get these guys out. It's basically like you're hitting enemy units with melee damage. Really really cool. And you can tell that it's melee because it's got this little sword here compared to, to here where it's got this uh, little the the uh, the two guns crossed over with each other now other natives that you can send you can send in the Yoruba allies so Yoruba are very very strong uh, so we'll take a look at exactly what these guys are so these guys are um, javelin throwing units just like the uh, natives that we've already covered or, or the uh, or what were they the uh, outlaws that we covered so these guys are natives the primary difference here being that they've got range resist and a huge health pool so they've got that 25 percent range resist so we'll take a look at exactly what the animation looks like so there we go so beautiful animation on these guys as well throwing out those javelins just want to make sure i don't uh, i don't kill those crocodiles i did unfortunately kill that crocodiles because the de the devrish came in uh looks like this croc might come back we'll just use a couple of these guys just to to demonstrate it's a really really nice animation here so, uh, a great unit here, and uh, they don't actually change uh, their resist base on their stance, but uh, nonetheless, very good against opponents in melee as well, if they're cavalry. So, something to consider. And then finally, we can actually send in the Desert Warriors as well. So, it's quite an expensive shipment, so 500 coin for this one. Just like your normal mercenary shipment, you know, like the, the Lakota have got the uh, Pistolero shipment. You know, they've got, uh, they've got these guys that they can send through as well, uh, the Desert Warriors. So, the same ones that are available. Uh, from the the uh, the outpost, you can get them here. These are the ones that switch through. Uh, so not not a bad uh, shipment at all. So let's move on now to the third age and take a look at the units that you're going to have available to you once you get up to the third age. So we'll turn speed always wins on and we'll go up to the next age. All right. So we're going to be dropping down a war camp and we'll talk about the age three unit that you're going to have access to. It's called the Lafiti Rider. So these guys here are absolute tanks, and they are quite literally the definition of tanks. High HP, low attack. So let's get some of these guys out on the field. Just take a look at their stats. So 24 attack, quite a low attack, but once again, they've got those dual resists. Dual resists are a big deal because it means that you're you're guaranteed to have a higher increase on that health pool. But look how much health they've got, 529 at a base. Now you can upgrade that. You've got the elite range warriors. You've also got elite hand cavalry. It's going to increase that by 10%. Okay, they are quite slow units, 6.25, so I think that's about the same as a Kurosia. Um, but uh, very, very tanky, a great part of uh, of your army, and definitely a unit that you want to be making a lot of. 110 coin, 90 food for these bad boys. So relatively expensive as well. It's about the same cost as a Lancer, not as expensive as that Kurosia, but definitely, uh, look, to be honest, if it came down to me choosing between a Lafiti Knight and a Kurosia, I'd probably take the Lafiti Knight just because of how tanky they are. That's exactly what you want. You want to have your Lafiti Knights out the front, your DPS on the back, and, and, and that's a perfect, uh, you know, combination that you can have. Now, in addition to this, you're going to have a whole bunch of mercenaries that you can send from the home city. So let's take a look at what are the options you've got. The first thing that you've got access to are the, the cannoneers. So the Portuguese allies can give you access to these through the Ethiopians. Now, you don't get access to the Portuguese allies here as the house. So you only get one access to these cannoneers. And it's going to be through here. So you're not going to be able to train them. Uh, so you definitely want to get these guys out here on the field. These guys are really strong. Basically like little Abus guns. Uh, m much better than Abus guns in my opinion. They are like the superior Abus guns. Just simply because they don't overkill as much. They've got less attack but there's more pop or, uh, but less population cost as well. So other mercenaries that we've got access to. You've got access to the Canari Guards. So Canari Guards are a Dragoon unit. Uh, so we'll take a look here. So they're a mercenary. So keep that in mind. So they will get counted by a Magadai. 
Uh, not overwhelming stats here. They do have that 40% range resist, so very nice in Dragoon Wars. Compared to, like, the Black Rider, you would always want to be taking these guys instead. Uh, much better unit. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the Senna Horsemen. Uh, so the Senna Horsemen are like Mamelukes, but uh, a little bit different. They've got less health, um, and they have a multiplier against artillery. They've also got uh, dual resist as well, so that 40%... Uh, dual resist is uh, very nice for the, the siege. So they're going to do very well against like, you know, Falconet masses, great bombards are going to do very effectively against that. They've also got 55 siege themselves. So quite nice on that. So let's now go up to the next age. Um, in addition to that, so you, if you've got a palace, your palace will have unlocked any mercenary that's available in the third age. So here we've got access to the Fusilier. Uh, we've also got access to the Manchu by the looks of it. Uh, and also access to the Ascari. So they're the three units that we've got access to here. Um, and keep in mind, for this civilization, it's going to cost you uh, influence. So the Ascari is a a musketeer. A, 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 I think it's like a, a, a Corollian almost um, mercenary. So that, that's what you're going to be dealing with. So now let's go up to the fourth age. We'll take a look at what you're going to have access to once you get up to the fourth age. So going up, I think I went up with Oromo there. I'm not sure exactly what they do. Let's take a look. Uh, oh no, we went up with Yoruba. Alright, so uh, I'm glad that we went up with Yoruba, and I'll show you guys exactly why that is, because things start to get serious with Yoruba. We are going to be able to do it as well. So the first thing is, uh, so we've already talked about the Sudanese allies. You can send them down here. There's another 15 shipment up here. So the the next thing is that you've got you've got access to this Canari shipment as well. So this enables you to actually train Canaries as well. So enables so it sends them from the home city. Now keep in mind, these guys shadow tech. So because they're mercenaries, they're going to go up um, a, a grade uh, once you get to industrial. As the Africans, your mercenaries will go up. Uh, it also enables you to train Canari. So it allows you to do it and splits the cost. Just like we saw earlier with that Magadai card here, where it splits the cost for the Magadai. So, uh, oh, was that the right card? That might have been the wrong card. Oh, it's the Akan. Sorry, the Akan. No, uh, it is this Magadai card. Yeah, this one. Sorry. Uh, so this Magadai card here splits the cost. I'm going to get some uh, some more housing population here. It's getting a, bit, a little bit uh, a little bit cramped. So Canary Guards enables you to train them. Now keep in mind that as as the house, you're going to have access to uh, already a very good dragoon unit, which is this guy right here, the javelin rider. But if you don't feel like that's doing enough for you, then you can train the Canary Guard as well. Uh, which is a, a, a pretty decent unit. Um, it's only two populations, so really, really... Uh, to be honest, the Canary Guard is, is a great unit, just simply because it's got that 40% range resist. So in, in those Skirmisher Dragoon Wars, it's going to be able to stay alive for a long, long time. And this card in Age 4 enables you to train them as well as sending in the 9 Canary Guard and uh, also uh, splitting the cost there. So the next thing that we can talk about are the Ascaris that come in. So you take a look at the Ascaris. Here they are at the home city. We talked about these earlier. These are musketeer, uh, musketeer um, uh, mercenaries. Uh, Carolian is probably the better way to say it. They've got the two times bonus in range against uh, cavalry. And then, of course, the next shipment are the Gatling Camel. So you will all be familiar with the infamous Gatling Camel. So the Gatling Camel, some nice stats on it. You can also send this one from the home city. So we'll delete those, get rid of those, because they eat up a lot of population. Looks like we're uh, we're losing a, a, a we're getting under attack down here. We'll send some units down to deal with that. So now also we can send in the Dahomey Amazon. So these are a new mercenary unit. So they've got a base movement speed. Oh, what is going on with this pathing? I, th I think these bodies here underneath the town center are kind of like stuffing up the pathing. You can see what's happening here. Like they're they're getting caught. I'm not sure exactly what's happening. We might change our unit shipment point up to the front here. Uh, so these guys are a, a particularly interesting skirmisher unit. So they've got 42 attack. 20 range and 5.5 movement speed. You can see this guy's still getting stuck back here. So Dahomey Amazon. So they're they're like a, a female um, skirmisher guard. You know, I think is how they're described here. So battle tested woman bodyguard mercenary of the Dahomey, armed with a rifle to counter infantry, throws knives at close targets. Uh, so oh, gotta be careful there. Uh, up against some falconets. So we can send our Devrish up to go deal with that if we've still got them. I don't think we do. We might have deleted them. Um, so they, they are a long-range skirmisher unit, so uh, a particularly uh, strong unit. A very expensive to train, though, 300 influence. So don't ever think for a second like you're going to be able to spam those girls. They're going to be very expensive for you to do. We'll just take all these guys out with our Abus, our pseudo Abus guns, our cannoneers. They're, uh, they're doing their best to try and take out these culves. You can see just how strong they are, one-shotting that culvern. Going to be able to one-shot all these culves as well. And then take these ones out. We'll just move those back. Just to do a nice little bit of micro here. Try and split these guys up. 
but uh, well, unfortunately we did lose a cannoneer there. And so let's take a look at my 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 favorite here. Okay, so this is the Yoruba ally, so we're just going to delete that. We'll delete all this uh, and, and get these all out. Uh, just to demonstrate the Yoruba allies, because this is definitely one of my favorite things. Now we're going to turn speed always wins off, because I, I want to just demonstrate to you how cool this is. So, I'm going to be sending in Yoruba allies. It takes 60 seconds for this to come in, because it is a... It is a mercenary shipment, okay? So mercenary shipments take 60 seconds. Normal military shipments take 40 seconds, okay? So what am I going to do? Now, I went up to age 4 with the Yoruba allies, okay? So I'm going to be doing one of the coolest things that I think exists in this, this game. The first thing I'm going to be doing is getting this technology right here, Yoruba Twins. And I'm going to be getting it right now because that is going to allow my Yoruba allies to spawn. And then it's going to spawn a copy of each one of them. In addition to that, I'm also going to be training my own Yoruba here. You can see that they actually train just like Minutemen. They train very fast, so I can I can delay that until we're a little bit closer. Let's pretend my enemy is pushing in right now. You know, they're pushing in, they're beginning to siege. Maybe they're sieging down a house or something like that. And then I can train these. Hopefully, I, I've done it on time. It looks, it looks like it might be close, but what's going to happen... Hopefully, it, it doesn't all get messed up here, but what's going to happen are my Yoruba are going to pop in and then they're going to spawn copies of themselves. There's all my Yoruba. I've got 22 of them. 3, 2, 1. Bam! Now I've got... How many Yoruba is that? Take a look at that. That's 44 Yoruba that I have got in an instant. In an instant. In a heartbeat. And I'm sure you guys are going to be like, that is ridiculous. That is crazy. And I agree with you. But one of the things to note with this unit, okay, its stats are absolutely insane. They are absolutely crazy. But they are like Minutemen. You can see the health is slowly ticking down for these units. They do not last. So let's say, hypothetically, your opponent pushes in. You've used a shipment here. You've spent a thousand of your influence. You've then done it. You've researched your technology here, which is a further 880 influence. You've got all of these guys out. Maybe you've even trained a couple of your own, which has been further influence that you've invested. Now you've got these. But when you push up, you, you, you know, you might wipe your opponent's army. You might lose, like, maybe this many Yoruba. And, and now you've got all of these guys that are still alive. But by the time that you get to your enemy's base... These guys are going to be continuing to lose health. Now, you're going to be able to do significant damage still with this, but the army is not going to last. They're going to be able to dwindle down your forces, and it's not going to be able to carry over. So, do I think that this probably needs to be nerfed a little bit? Yeah, I do. Uh, do I think it's a very cool mechanic where you can just pop out, you know, a, a thousand units at once? I love it. I think it's amazing. I think it's fantastic. Um... I mean, just looking at these units, I'm sure you guys can see how ridiculous the stats are. It's got double resists, 40%, a base of 320 HP. So you're talking about, you know, the equivalent of like 500 hit points on these guys. 480, I think. Uh, I'm not too sure off the top of my head. But um, And then obviously they've got a, a huge attack already, big siege. They also get a faster attack speed as they lose health. So as an example, like if you're on 100% hit, uh, hit points... Uh, let, let me just delete a couple of these and, and let's just train let's let's train some and just have a look but you can see as this one's continuing to lose hit points its attack rate is dropping down which means it's going to attack faster and faster and more crazy and more crazy and so over here you can watch when we attack I don't really want to attack into pikes because I think it's just going to die quickly but this has got a base of 2 attack this is 1.4 so I, let's avoid attacking into pikes let's see if we can go find something uh, we, we've got Siege here. Siege probably isn't the best. Actually, we've got some crossbows. Let's see if we can get them. Here we go. So, one, two. You can see how fast they are. One, two. And now we bring in the uh, the full health allies. Well, the, these aren't full health anymore. They're, they're slowly trickling down, but you can see that it's going to be slightly longer. We'll do an attack move there. One, two. You can see it's a big difference between the attack speeds, though, but... Uh, Look, I, I think at the moment, this unit's probably going to get changed uh, in, in a couple of in, of future patches. I wouldn't be surprised. But at, at the moment, I, I look, I, I think it's a very cool uh, potential strategy that you can be doing. And look, at, as I go towards the end here, I think that's pretty much it when it comes to the units. The other thing that I am forgetting to mention is just when it comes to artillery, this civilization does have access to all the European artillery through a technology. So you did see I researched the technology there. It takes quite a while. Uh, to research, but you can get access to, you know, uh, European uh, cannons. These guys all do uh, tech or, or shadow tech, so that they means that they automatically upgrade to Royal Culverin. They all automatically upgrade to Imperial when we get up to Imperial Age as well. Uh, so quite strong in that they they auto upgrade. 
Uh, but one of the things to note is that they do cost influence. That's the big thing. It costs influence. Now, this resource is a... It's not an infinite resource. It's infinite in the way that you can generate it, you know, infinitely. But it's very hard to, to generate. I, I probably infinite's not the right word I want to use. It's, it's a rare resource. It's difficult to get. You can't just... You know, you can't set your villages onto farms and gather influence. So you've got to be very careful about what you use your influence with. So these guys are expensive. 500 influence for a culverin. You lose your culverins, you know, that that's it. You, you can't make any more until you've got more influence. So something to be really careful with. Uh, um, and I, I, I've got a number of fears about the way that... Uh, uh, the, uh, the way that artillery works with the Ethiopians and the house uh, when you're playing against them. Uh, so that's something that, I, that is going to be, you know, continually looked at when it comes to balance. But fellas, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Ethiopian, rather, the Hausa military. If you think that I've missed anything, make sure you leave it down in the comments. Let me know if you have enjoyed this video. Leave a like, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.